Hello, N4H and H here. I want to talk about noise blinkers. Uh, this is the ASU FTDX5000, but before you tune away, what I'm going to show you applies to just about any modern rig as well. Uh, this rig is, of course, uh, well, tw 12 years old, not mine. I bought mine in uh, late 2019, but this this uh, particular model, uh, you know, is DMP, but the original FTDX5000 came out in 2010. So this was a, a little bit of a transitional uh, era, and so this radio has two different types of noise blankers in it. If you've watched very many videos on my channel, you've heard me get on the soapbox about how we get uh, snookered, bamboozled by marketing hype, and everybody, you know, you. <laughs> Everybody likes to talk about, you know, the latest technology and it must be the best because it's the newest. And that's not always the case. Um, be, be very, very careful about buying into too much marketing hype. Uh, so, for example, you know, you'll hear, you know, SDR, DSP, all these things thrown around. Well, understand that the more that the manufacturers can do on a chip, uh, that's less that they have to manufacture, less less labor involved in building the rig. So that's going to increase their profit margins. That does not necessarily always make it a better technology, and such is the case with noise blankers. Uh, I've mentioned this in passing before, uh, but a traditional noise blanker was better, especially at dealing with uh, power line noise or... Uh, uh, ignition noise from your car. Traditional noise blankers did a really good job with that on, uh, well, not all, okay, I'll, I'll admit to you, some radios had a better noise blanker than others. Um, the FT890, I'm always singing its praises because that radio has the best noise blanker I've ever, ever used. Um, and it's just a traditional analog noise blanker and it can knock all my ignition noise out in my truck um, and not degrade the quality of the receive audio at all. Those of you who have a modern transceiver, you know, something made in the last, say, 10 years, if you turn your noise blanker on and run it up too, too high, it may deal with the noise, but then it also has a tendency to make the receive audio sound distorted, um, such is the case with, uh, you know, the FT891. I have two of them. Don't get me wrong. I like that radio, but that is its flaw is its noise blanker. So, again, traditional noise blankers, Lock on to a pulse of noise. It's better if the pulse is, uh, you know, steady intervals and um, and also similar amplitude. So like power line noise, and uh, and and ignition noise. So uh, they they're going to do a good job for you. But there's one downside even to the traditional noise blanker. They have a ten tendency to degrade the receive selectivity. So I've mentioned this in other videos. I'll say it again here. If you're listening, uh, let's see, where am I? 3856. So let's say that I'm listening on 3856, and I think I hear some um, bleed over from somebody, let's just say they're at 3862. Uh, well, that's a good ways away. They shouldn't be bleeding over, right? Check and see if you have your noise blanker engaged. Um, because that's what I'm talking about. So if you disengage your noise blanker void, you see that we've got storms in the area. Um, if, uh, if, if your noise blanker was engaged and you disable it and you notice that that what you thought was a uh, you know, splatter or bleed over goes away, it was your noise blanker causing it. It degrades the selectivity of the receiver. So I've always said only use a noise blanker when you absolutely have to, you know, to get by until you can take care of the source of the noise, i.e., Call the power company, uh, get them to come fix what's causing the noise on their uh, power lines because they're they are obligated to do that. Uh, in the case of your vehicle, try a lot of ground straps, you know, bonding, bond your fuel rail, all those sorts of things. Um, sometimes that doesn't always take care of it. Fortunately for me, the FT eight ninety in my truck would just knock it out, and I didn't have to worry about anything else. But the eight ninety one in my truck doesn't. Now, if you happen to own an FT eight ninety one, let me give you a tip here. Um, the noise blanker may knock out about 90% of your ignition noise, but it's going to introduce some, almost makes people sound like they're gargling um, in the, um, uh, you know, for signals that are more than S9, I'll say, especially, you know, over S9 uh, into the 5, 10 dB over range. Um, it'll almost sound like they're gargling. So IPO is your friend, okay? Intercept point optimization 
enable that because you're not going to need that extra receive sensitivity uh, if you know if you've got a signal that's above an S9. And also maybe even turn on the attenuator. Now in the FT891, you've only got one attenuator. It's either on or off. Um, sort of like with the I ICOM IC7300 has one attenuation, on or off. It's 20 dB. Now see, as opposed to, for example, look here. Uh, watch the display right there. So right now, attenuation is off. There's negative 6, negative 12, negative 18. So some radios have mul uh, uh, you know, multiple levels of attenuation. Uh, but some radios, it's either on or off. There is no in-between. And such is the case with the FT891, the IC7300. Um, now, those of you who have an FTDX10 or 101, you do have these three levels of attenuation. But again, I'm just saying... First thing you want to do is if you've, if you've got the noise blanker on because you have no other choice and you're getting that gargling effect, a little distortion in the audio, uh, just be sure to, um, you know, run that noise blanker only as high as you need to to deal with the noise, okay? So I'm going to use the 5000 here as an example. I've got some noise. You can see it on the screen. I'll tell you what's causing the noise. It's my wife's laptop. Uh, those little brick power supplies that power laptops are terrible about that. All right, so... I'm going to turn on, let me pan over so you can see. I, if, I don't know if you watched my video about why I like a radio with knobs, but there's my noise blinker. Now you notice it helped a little. Turn the volume up a little. Here we are without it. With it. Now this noise blinker has a knob to control the level. I'll just tell you, any much above 12 o'clock doesn't help and can hurt. And what I'm talking about there is um, even this traditional noise blanker can can get put a little distortion in the audio when you run it wide open. So only run it as high as you need to. See, off is not helping. But there's no difference between 12 o'clock and all the way up. So I almost never move that knob from 12. If it's going to do anything at all, it'll do it at 12 o'clock. Now, some noise is... And this is the case here with this uh, computer power supply. You see how it's a little bit more random? It's not exactly tracking exactly uh, the same distance between the pulses and the amplitudes varying. So this kind of noise blanker just can't quite track all that. So I'm going to engage the second level of noise blanker that this radio has. And you, to do it, you just tap the uh, noise blanker knob. And I'm going to pan back over a little bit so you can see the display. Uh, let me draw your attention right there. See, it says NB. Here's off. NB, that's traditional noise blanker. Now I'm going to tap one more time, and that's a wide noise blanker. And notice that it's doing a better job of dealing with that noise. Wide mode. Now, I will warn you, though, it can introduce distortion big time, so only run that where you need to. I'll get into that in just a moment in the menu. But... Um, you know, so it's got the ability to, you know, be wider and, and in, in case those pulses are more random, like you see there, of shifting, they give you these adjustments to go in there and, and tailor that some. So let me show you how you do that. I'm going to be going into the menu on this rig. But again, if you have a, another Yaesu radio or even another brand of radio, you'll probably have similar settings in your menu. So for those of you who own an FTDX 5000, we're going to tap right here to go into our menu. Menu number 111 is, is that no, wide noise blanker width. And menu 110 is the wide noise blanker level. Okay, so that's going to be how aggressive is it. It's a scale up to 100. Right now it's on 33. And then this is the width, how wide it's going to search for those noise pulses. So caution. Don't, you don't want it searching too wide. If it searches too wide, it will begin to degrade the audio of the, res, of the people you're listening to. Just the, again, that, that gargling effect or a raspy voice sound. Even though the scale goes up to 100, only use what you need to. I'm at 18 right now. Now, notice that the level is at 33. Now you might think, well, if 18 is good, how about, what about 100? <laughs> well, um, that's going to get you into some distortion. So especially uh, if you're running the timing, the width, 
high as well. So let's leave that at 18. And let me go to the width. And I should mention about the width. After you make a change, let it settle a minute. It has to retract. So as you rotate it, you may not necessarily hear an instant change. Okay, see, it's not completely eliminating it, but it's taking care of most of it. Here we are without it again. And there's traditional and then wide mode. Let me, let me see if I can find someone who's talking. Let me go to uh, 40. Try 20. Oh, there's a big signal. Yeah, you are five nine plus here in New Jersey. Alright, here we go. Now traditional and wide. And here we are without it. Traditional wide. Okay, now I'm over here in the menu. But again, if you don't have a 5000, you're going to have similar adjustments in your rig. Even even the FT891 has it. It's in the uh you know, the big menu, the one uh, that you get by uh, long pressing your function button. Uh FTDX10 has it. Other radios, other brands. Just read your manual and find out where the adjustments are for your uh, noise blanker. It may not be called a wide noise blanker, but just look for things like the, you know, level, timing, width, that kind of stuff. All right. Now, I wanted to give you an example of what happens if you run these too high. I'm going to go to 100 on width. Listen to his audio. Now, when he talks again, I'll turn it off. See, he cleared up. You don't want to run these things higher than you need, okay? I will give you a little bit of a hint here with the 5,000. I find 33 is a sweet spot. It's not critical, though. Somewhere in that range is uh, I have found to be effective. And uh, as far as the width, definitely not 100. Notice it didn't even really make it much different. Oh, let me turn back on. There we go. See, it introduces that distortion. But you notice the noise is not a little, not a lot different, even at 57. So I'm finding that settings of say seven to even 30, 35. When in doubt, you could do 33 and 33 as a starting point and then tweak from there. All right, looks like 30 is a magic number there, letting it settle. So level's 33, width is 30. Again, here we are without it. Okay, so I hope you found the help, uh, easy for me to say, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. As always, I want to thank you uh, for watching and supporting my channel, especially uh, those of you who provide uh, a monetary support each month through the Patreon program. Uh, without you, the channel doesn't happen. So uh, those of you who are uh, watching and appreciate this type of content, uh, it's, it comes to you because of people who support this channel via the Patreon program. And uh, if you'd like to help out with that, you can go to www.patreonpatreon.com forward slash N4HNH. 
patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. There are three levels of participation there. A small monthly donation. Um, those of you who will join at the executive and VIP level have access to uh, some additional content that is exclusive for you. Um, not the least of which are um, some documents that I've uh, created their PDF files that go through all of my menu customizations to the FTDX 5000, the FTDX 10, the FT991 and 991A, also the FT891. So far, those are the radios I've done that for because those are the radios I've been able to, uh, you know, get my hands on uh, to do that for. So, uh, and it covers uh, the knobs, the buttons, how, how I combine them, what they do can do for you as well as my menu optimizations, transmit audio, receive audio, such as that. So take advantage of those if you join at executive or VIP level. And uh, so again, thank you to the Patreon supporters of the channel. And if you would please uh, like the video, that helps us out with YouTube's search algorithm and that, that does everyone um, a service because it makes the channel uh, you know, more visible to other people that can come along and find this content and learn from it as well. So please consider liking the video. And of course, uh, if you would subscribe to the channel and that helps us even more. Plus, if you would, if you subscribe, click that little notification bell so you will be notified when I upload the next video. Hey, thanks again for watching and 73 from N4HNH.